put you over the eaves so you can be in the sun. I put you over the eaves so you can be in the sun. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another Untold Stories of a Medical Student. So I'm just going to let you know right now, if you get really grossed out easily or you get nauseous or nauseated by gross stories, you're going to want to click off this video now. This is not the video for you. We'll see you in the next one. Deuces. But if you have a strong stomach and you can handle it, then stick around for this story. So I was on my emergency medicine rotation. Um, it was like the night shift again, overnight, 12 hours and it had been a pretty chill day. Like we had cases coming in throughout the night, of course, but nothing was super crazy. And I was gonna go take my lunch. So this is like two, three o'clock in the morning and I go to have my little break. Um, go down to the cafeteria, chillin', chillin', chillin'. And then all of a sudden, of course, I hear trauma code to the trauma bay, which means that there's a really bad trauma coming in. And I'm like, really? The second that I leave the floor, now there's a big trauma? So I go back upstairs after I've like eaten a little sum sum and all of my freaking colleagues are in the trauma bay we're doing CPR on this patient and I'm like oh my god like seriously the second I walk away this is what happens so the patient's completely disrobed laying flat on the bed with a board underneath his back and my resident is doing chest compressions on the patient um, and somebody is trying to get prepared to intubate the patient um, the, apparently, the patient was found already collapsed. Um, somebody called 911 and then EMS took the patient and he basically died in the ambulance and they started doing CPR on him. So he came in and they were doing CPR on him. When um, they brought him inside, he was able to be resuscitated to the point that he didn't need CPR for a little bit, hooked up to the monitor, and then he flatlined again. So we started CPR on him again. Finally, we got him back again. So he was stabilized and we were like, okay, great. Like, you know, he's, he's okay. We need to continue on to the next step. So no more chest compression. So uh, now we get a chest x-ray. On the chest x-ray, we see that he has a collapsed lung. So we're like, all right, we've got to put a chest tube. Let's go. So we go to put the chest tube in. Um, one of the residents is counting down the ribs on the side of this patient's chest and gets to that perfect intercostal space, the space in between two ribs, and starts to make his incision. Then he starts advancing his tube inside this patient's chest cavity. And the point of this is to decrease the pressure inside the chest cavity so that the lung can fill up and the patient can breathe more easily. And as the tube is advancing, fluid starts to come out of the patient's chest cavity, which was not really what we were expecting. We weren't expecting him to have liquid in his chest, which could have been, could have been blood, but there was no sign that there was blood, um, or it could have been what it was. So the fluid that's pouring out of this patient's chest cavity is a thick, milky white consistence. This is called a chylothorax. It's basically a when your chest cavity is full of like pus, and that is what had filled up his chest cavity to the point that it was collapsing his lung. So it was a slow drip as we're getting the fluid and compressing his lung out. And we're collecting this fluid to run it for sampling to see what it is, because clearly this patient must have an infection. So now we're looking around for like what could be a source of infection does he have pneumonia or something like that but the chest x-ray didn't really show signs of pneumonia but you know it's kind of hard to tell because collapsed lung so we're just continuing on with the process of what you do when you have a patient who's in a dire straits like this so the audio got weird but basically what happened was that now that we have the chest tube in we were preparing to continue disrobing the patient and we saw that he had a wrap on his foot so we decided to unravel the wrap and... So guys, when I tell you, I was not prepared in any way to see what I saw, okay? I freaking saw maggots, live maggots, crawling around in a wound in this man's foot. And I could see down to his freaking bone because he had such a bad... Ugh, even I'm still getting chills. He had such a bad infection in his foot that maggots were crawling in it, living inside of his body. So clearly this patient had been sick with this, with this wound that he was not taken care of for a very long time. And when I tell you that that wound smelled so bad, it literally 
permeated the entire trauma bay with the scent. All of us as doctors are obviously being as professional as possible because, you know, this patient is sick. Like, we're not going to make them feel bad. Granted, the patient was unconscious, but their family member was there and we don't want anybody to feel bad. It's not his fault. He got sick. But it was just not what we were expecting to see. And so I was just grateful for the masks because I, my jaw was dropped. Like, I've never seen anything like that before. And none of the other residents said that they had seen anything like that either. So everyone was like, this is... A really cool like medical finding to see we were kind of geeking out over it but also really skeeved out too like I once I saw that I felt like I had worms on my body like I kept feeling itchy on my body and it was very uncomfortable but at the same time we were like okay we need to obviously change out this patient's dressing and we're gonna have to assess like what's going on like maybe his foot will need to be amputated in the future he definitely has to be admitted to the hospital so now, thankfully, the patient is stable. So we change the dressing, we connect the chest tube to a machine that helps to suction out the rest of the fluid and hopefully allow for his lung to expand and function better. He's intubated, and now there's nothing more that can be done in this emergent setting. So we're gonna set him up to be taken upstairs to the floors and be taken care of there in a more in intensive and extensive process. So we bring him over to the area of the emergency room where we are working so that we can keep a close eye on this patient in case anything goes south. And sure enough, in a bit of time, he ends up flatlining again and requiring CPR again. So the team goes, starts doing rounds of CPR on him, rounds and rounds and rounds of CPR. And unfortunately, he, he wasn't able to come back. So we did end up unfortunately losing this patient and he passed away. So from what we could see of this patient with their clinical presentation in the emergency room, we could tell that this patient had probably been sick for a very long time and perhaps didn't have the resources or the accessibility to healthcare to be able to keep up with his healthcare and, and prevent his conditions from progressing to the level that they had. There were signs that he potentially may have had a few very extensive illnesses that had been progressing and causing these issues like the the wound in his foot, it probably didn't heal properly because he had uncontrolled diabetes. The fact that he had the pus in his chest is a sign that maybe he had an underlying pneumonia for a long time that was untreated, or maybe he even had some form of cancer. And we didn't know this because he came in without ID, so we had no access to his medical records. Um, and once we did get his name, he'd never been in our system before. So these are questions that will unfortunately never be answered. So the next step was that we notified his family of his passing and that was really the end of his story. And with that, that's the end of my story. You know, that was one of the first times that I've really seen a patient die up close in personal and it was very, um, it was very humbling, very sobering. Being in these instances where I can see patients who have had their illnesses and they haven't really been able to keep up with maintaining the care for these illnesses and chronic conditions it really makes me feel grateful for my health and for the health of my family and it just emphasizes for me every day how important it is to be healthy how important it is to stay healthy and so that really has an impact on the way that i live my life and i'm grateful to every patient that i get to see because of that so with that being said i hope you guys like this video i hope you enjoyed the story and i'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe. don't forget to like and subscribe thanks guys Bye.